Toyota has just dropped a bombshell on the auto industry, an engine that doesn't just compete with electric cars, but could actually make the entire EV market look like yesterday's news. So what exactly is Toyota up to? Let's dive in. The rebel of the auto industry. Toyota versus the EV stampede. If you look at the car industry right now, it feels like every brand is racing toward one finish line, a future that's fully electric. Ford, Volkswagen, Mercedes, all lining up with promises to phase out gas engines and flood the streets with EVs. But then you've got Toyota, standing off to the side with their arms crossed, saying, hold on a second, we're not buying into this just yet. And that's the twist that has everyone's eyebrows raised. Now, let's not forget this isn't some backwards company stuck in the past. This is Toyota, the same brand that gave the world the Prius back in the late 90s. The Prius was radical when it launched. A gas engine paired with an electric motor? At the time, it sounded almost futuristic. But it worked, and it changed the game, setting the stage for the hybrid movement that followed. So here's where things get spicy. Fast forward to today, when everyone else is ditching gas altogether, and Toyota is resisting the herd mentality. They even refused to sign the COP26 climate pledge, the one calling for a total ban on gas-powered car sales by 2040. That move stirred up massive backlash, critics accused Toyota of slowing progress, maybe even protecting their business. But Toyota insists it's not about dragging feet, it's about being realistic. Because while flashy EV promises look good in the headlines, Toyota says the world simply isn't ready for an overnight switch. And if they're right, forcing that change too quickly could backfire in a huge way. The CEO who dared to say no. To really understand Toyota's stance, you've got to look at the man who set the tone for years. Akio Toyota. Until 2023, he was at the helm. And unlike most auto executives who carefully dance around trends, Akio wasn't afraid to ruffle some feathers. He straight up said, Look, I'm not against electric cars, but I don't think they're the perfect solution for everyone. And in today's world, that kind of honesty hits like a grenade in a boardroom. Instead of chasing Tesla with one EV announcement after another, Toyota under Akio kept pouring money into hybrids, hydrogen fuel projects, and even developing new combustion engines. That approach didn't win him any fans among environmental groups or EV evangelists, but he didn't flinch. He argued that the hype around electric cars was overblown, and the industry was moving way too aggressively in one direction. Now, critics accused him of being stuck in the past. Maybe even anti-progress. But here's the thing, Toyota's record shows the opposite. They've always innovated, just not always in the way the crowd expects. Remember, the Prius was a gamble and it paid off. So when Akio said rushing into an all-electric future wasn't the smartest move, he wasn't just protecting Toyota's turf. He was making the case for variety hybrids, hydrogen, and even cleaner gas engines working together rather than pushing one solution for the entire planet. That vision came with risks. If EV adoption skyrockets faster than Toyota predicted, they risk looking outdated. But if the EV transition hits roadblocks, Toyota could suddenly look like the only company that saw the storm coming, the hidden cracks in the EV dream. Now, let's talk about why Toyota is so hesitant to follow the herd. On the surface, EVs sound flawless. No tailpipe emissions, futuristic features, and governments worldwide pushing policies to ban gas cars by 2035. But dig a little deeper, and you start to see some cracks in this shiny electric dream. First off, the power grid problem. Right now, EVs make up just a tiny fraction of cars on the road. But if we scaled that to 20, 30, even 50 percent, the demand for electricity would explode in the U.S. alone. Toyota estimates the grid would need to produce about 40 percent more electricity by 2030 just to keep up. That means building dozens of new power plants in under a decade. At a time when grids are already straining under heat waves, rolling blackouts, and energy shortages. Then there's the battery dilemma. EVs rely on lithium, nickel, cobalt minerals that aren't just scarce, but messy to mine. Lithium mining, for example, drains local water supplies and destroys ecosystems in places like Chile and Argentina. Add in cobalt mining, often tied to child labor in the Congo, and suddenly those clean cars don't look so clean anymore. And let's not even get started on the recycling crisis. Most EV batteries last 8 to 15 years, 
and there's no clear plan to recycle them at scale. That's a waste disaster waiting to happen. Oh, and the cost? The average EV in the U.S. sells for around $50,000, while a gas-powered car sits closer to $35,000. Even with tax credits, EVs are out of reach for millions of people. And if you do manage to buy one, charging can be a headache from 8 to 40 hours at home, or waiting in long lines at the limited number of public fast chargers. So when Toyota looks at all this, they see a problem. EVs may be part of the solution, but they're far from perfect. And forcing the whole world to go all in without fixing these cracks could end in chaos. Toyota's counter move, the hydrogen combustion engine. Here's where Toyota flips the script. While the world is obsessed with batteries and charging cables, Toyota has been quietly working on something that sounds almost impossible. A hydrogen-powered internal combustion engine. Not a fuel cell, not a plug-in hybrid, but an actual piston-pumping, valve-snapping mechanical engine that runs on compressed hydrogen instead of gasoline. They've already got prototypes, the Corolla Cross H2 and the GR Yaris H2, and they're not just lab experiments. These cars are real drivable machines that Toyota has been testing on tracks and rally stages. And the science behind it is fascinating. Hydrogen burns faster and hotter than gasoline, which means Toyota had to beef up the pistons, reinforce the valves, and redesign the ignition system so the engine could handle the punch. The fuel system itself is also tweaked, storing hydrogen at super high pressure before feeding it into the cylinders. The benefits are wild. For starters, it feels familiar drivers still get that raw mechanical roar, the revs, and the quick acceleration that battery-powered EVs just can't mimic. Refueling is lightning fast too, anywhere between 90 seconds to 5 minutes, compared to the half hour to an hour you might spend waiting at a fast charger. And here's a kicker. Hydrogen cars aren't as sensitive to extreme temperatures, which means no winter range drop like EV batteries suffer. Plus, without a giant, heavy battery pack, these cars are lighter, nimbler, and way more fun to drive. So while the EV world has been stuck debating charging plugs in kilowatt hours, Toyota might just have unlocked the kind of impossible engine that makes us rethink what clean mobility really means. The hydrogen roadblock. Infrastructure, cost, and perception. Of course, every big idea has its Achilles heel, and hydrogen's weakness isn't in the car, it's in the ecosystem. Right now, the US has about 160,000 public EV chargers. Wanna guess how many hydrogen pumps exist? Around 60. Total. And the majority are clustered in California. Building a hydrogen refueling station is no small project. We're talking millions of dollars per site, compared to a few thousand bucks to put in an EV charger. That means scaling hydrogen is going to take not just time, but massive investment. And that cost doesn't stop at the pump. Hydrogen fuel itself is pricey. At roughly $12 per kilogram, filling up a hydrogen car can set you back between $60 and $80. That's already more expensive than plugging in an EV, and in some cases, even more than a gas tank. Then there's the elephant in the room, where the hydrogen comes from. Right now, the majority of hydrogen is made from natural gas, which still produces carbon emissions. The dream is green hydrogen, made by splitting water with renewable power like wind or solar. But green hydrogen is expensive, and scaling it to global demand is going to take decades. And here's another issue. Consumer psychology. People already understand EVs. They see the Teslas on the road, the chargers in parking lots, hydrogen cars. To most people, they sound like science fiction, or worse, like an experiment doomed to fail. So while the technology is legit, the infrastructure is nowhere near ready. And until those hurdles are cleared, hydrogen risks becoming that brilliant idea that never escapes the prototype stage. Hybrids, the quiet weapon in Toyota's arsenal. Now, while hydrogen grabs the headlines, Toyota's real secret weapon has been hiding in plain sight this whole time. Hybrids. Think about it when everyone else mocked the Prius as a nerd car. Toyota quietly sold millions of them, and today, they're still selling strong. That's because hybrids solve a lot of problems without demanding massive lifestyle changes. You don't need a charging station. You don't need to worry about winter range. You just drive. And the car figures out how to balance gas and electric power on its own. It cuts fuel use, lowers emissions, and still gives you the reliability Toyota is known for. And with plug-in hybrids, you get short electric-only range for city trips. 
plus a gas engine for the long hauls. For most people, that's a sweet spot EVs can't touch. This is especially true in places with weaker power grids or lower incomes. In many countries, a full EV is just unrealistic, the infrastructure isn't there. But a hybrid? That works anywhere. And Toyota knows it. While other automakers bet the farm on EVs, Toyota keeps cranking out hybrids and selling them by the millions. And they're not stopping there. For heavy-duty transport, think trucks and buses. Toyota is doubling down on hydrogen fuel cells, which actually make more sense than giant EV batteries. A semi-truck powered by batteries would weigh tons more and take forever to charge. A hydrogen truck, on the other hand, can refuel fast and keep rolling, which makes it a better fit for long-haul logistics. So, while rivals go all-in on EVs, Toyota is quietly spreading its bets. Hybrids, for today. Hydrogen, for tomorrow. That balance might be the exact reason they don't just survive this transition, but dominate it. The future. Disruption or diversification? Now comes the billion-dollar question is Toyota behind the curve? Or are they playing chess while everyone else is stuck on checkers? Because here's the twist. Toyota isn't ignoring EVs, they're still investing heavily in solid-state batteries, which could solve a lot of the current problems with weight, cost, and lifespan. Imagine a car with twice the range, charging in minutes, and lasting decades without replacing the battery that's the kind of breakthrough Toyota is quietly chasing. But their bigger play is refusing to believe in a single winner. Hybrids, hydrogen, and EVs, all coexisting, all serving different markets. And when you think about it, that makes sense. Gasoline didn't kill diesel. Trains didn't kill airplanes. Solar panels didn't wipe out all other energy sources. The world isn't black and white, and Toyota's betting the future won't be either. The risk, of course, is that they look outdated in the short term. If EV adoption rockets faster than expected, Toyota risks being labeled the dinosaur that hesitated. But if the EV bubble pops because of costs, grids, or resource shortages, then Toyota could suddenly look like the only brand that kept its head cool. Maybe the EV revolution isn't the final chapter in this story. Maybe Toyota just revealed the plot twist. So let me throw this back to you. Do you think Toyota is saving the auto industry from a rushed, fragile EV future? Or are they sabotaging the clean revolution we were promised?